There's nothing quite like the sound of an engine revving before hitting the open road. But before you start that epic road trip, there's a necessary pit stop, the gas station. You're not getting far without filling up your tank. It'd be nice if we could just tap into a stream of gasoline whenever we needed it, but sadly, life's not that easy. Gasoline doesn't flow naturally like water. It actually comes from crude oil. But have you ever wondered how it's made? Well, today's your lucky day because that's exactly what we'll be talking about. So keep watching. Back in the day, gasoline was pretty straightforward. It was produced by simply distilling crude oil without any complex chemical processes. This method, called straight-run gasoline, worked fine until around the early 1900s when cars started becoming more common. Suddenly, the demand for gasoline shot up and distillation alone couldn't keep up. By 1912, refineries started recovering gasoline from natural gas, but it wasn't ideal. The natural gasoline was too volatile and didn't have a great anti-knock properties, meaning it caused engine knocking. So refineries had to step up their game and they developed several new processes to meet the demand. Today, gasoline isn't just made one way. Refineries blend several different products from crude oil using methods like distillation, catalytic cracking, hydrocracking, and reforming. Each step helps refine crude oil into different components, like light naphtha, which is part of a finished gasoline, or heavier oils that go into products like diesel fuel, jet fuel, and industrial oils. First, the crude oil is sourced, then transported to refineries where it undergoes the refining process before it's finally delivered to gas stations. At the refinery, the hydrocarbons and crude oil are separated and purified to make them suitable for use in engines. Crude oil comes in various types, light, medium, heavy, and extra heavy, and each has its own unique characteristics like viscosity, density, and sulfur content. These properties affect how the oil is extracted and processed. The most common methods of extraction include using natural pressure from underground reservoirs, fracking, which involves injecting water, steam, or gas to push the oil out, and using chemicals to make the oil easier to pump. Once extracted, crude oil is typically transported to refineries by pipelines, which are the safest and most efficient method over long distances. When pipelines aren't available, Oil can be transported by train or tanker ships, especially for overseas travel. However, transporting oil safely is not easy. Spills and leaks can cause significant environmental harm and lead to economic losses. But thanks to advances in technology and improved safety measures, there's hope that these risks will continue to be reduced in the future. At the refinery, the first step is distillation where the crude oil is heated and separated into various components based on their boiling points. One of the key outputs of this stage is the light naphtha, a crucial ingredient in gasoline that often doesn't require further refining. However, not all crude oil fractions are ready for the fuel pump just yet. Heavier fractions like heavy naphtha need to go through additional processes such as catalytic reforming, which converts them into high octane gasoline components. Petroleum refineries use a range of technologies to convert crude oil into more valuable products like gasoline, diesel, and kerosene. One key piece of equipment in this process is the vacuum distillation unit, which allows refineries to produce more useful products by separating heavier fractions of crude oil that can't be processed by standard distillation methods. These units are often complemented by viscosity breakers or visa breakers, which are used to reduce the viscosity of heavy oils, making them easier to process. In recent years, nanofluids have emerged as an innovative tool in enhancing the efficiency of heat transfer in various industrial processes, including petroleum refinement. These fluids consist of nanoparticles suspended in base fluids, which improves properties like viscosity, density, and thermal conductivity. Nanofluids have wide-ranging applications in industries such as biomedical engineering, nuclear reactors, and even automotive cooling systems. Researchers have explored various aspects of nanofluid behavior, from flow dynamics to heat transfer properties, leading to promising results across different sectors. But distillation alone can't meet the world's growing demand for gasoline. This is where cracking comes in. Cracking breaks down larger, more complex hydrocarbons into smaller, more volatile ones that are better suited for gasoline production. 
there are two types, catalytic cracking, which uses catalysts to boost octane levels, and thermal cracking, which relies on heat and pressure. Both of these processes are crucial in making gasoline more efficient for engines. Then, to produce even more versatile gasoline, refineries developed hydrocracking. By adding hydrogen to the cracking process, refineries can adjust the output depending on seasonal demands. However, the result often lacks the high octane compounds needed for premium gasoline, so these stocks are sent through another crucial process, reforming. In catalytic reforming, low octane hydrocarbons are converted into high octane fuels using specialized catalysts, usually platinum and rhenium, which gives the gasoline its performance edge. Still, even after cracking and reforming, there's more to the story. Some refineries use alkylation, which takes lighter gases and turns them into extremely high-octane liquids. This is important because these alkylates form a major component of high-octane gasoline, reducing engine docking and improving fuel efficiency. The alkylation process typically takes place in a liquid phase reaction using either sulfuric acid or hydrofluoric acid as a catalyst. The choice of catalyst depends on the refinery's setup, with both types having their advantages and challenges. Sulfuric acid alkylation operates at lower temperatures, around 30 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 1 degrees Celsius, while hydrofluoric acid alkylation functions at a higher range at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees centigrade. These acids act as catalysts, facilitating the bonding between isobutane and olefins to form the desired alkylate product. The process begins by mixing isobutane with olefins in the presence of the acid catalyst inside the reactor. The mixture is stirred vigorously to ensure proper contact between the reactants. The reaction results in the formation of alkylates along with some heavier hydrocarbons. Once the reaction is complete, the acid is separated from the hydrocarbon mixture and recycled for further use. The alkylates are then sent to the distillation units where they are purified and separated from other hydrocarbons to produce high purity gasoline components. One of the major benefits of alkylation is the production of gasoline components with high octane numbers, typically in the range of 90 to 100. These high octane alkylates are crucial for modern engines that require cleaner, more efficient fuels. However, due to the high cost of acid catalysts and the need for stringent safety measures, especially with hydrofluoric acid, the alkylation process is considered expensive, but the results are top-notch. Gasoline with outstanding anti-knock qualities that's perfect for high-performance engines. Once these streams have been refined and blended, there's another important step, removing sulfur and other foul-smelling compounds through hydrogenation. This not only improves the gasoline's environmental profile, but also prevents corrosion in engines and pipelines. After this, a variety of additives are blended into the gasoline. These additives include everything from anti-knock agents to detergents, each designed to enhance performance and longevity in our vehicles. After refining and blending the various hydrocarbon streams into gasoline, refineries take additional steps to improve the fuel's quality, performance, and environmental safety. One of the most critical steps in this process is hydrogenation which is essential for removing sulfur and other unwanted components that can affect both the environment and the engine health. Hydrogenation involves the use of hydrogen gas in a combination with a catalyst, typically nickel or platinum, to chemically react with sulfur and other impurities. These impurities are removed by converting sulfur compounds into hydrogen sulfide, which can be easily separated and processed further. This step is particularly important because sulfur, if left untreated, produces sulfur dioxide when the fuel is burned. Sulfur dioxide is a harmful pollutant that contributes to acid rain and has severe environmental and public health impacts. The removal of sulfur also enhances the quality of gasoline. Sulfur can cause corrosion in engines, pipelines, and other components of the fuel distribution system. By removing sulfur through hydrogenation, Refineries ensure that the gasoline delivered to consumers is not only cleaner, but also less likely to cause long-term damage to vehicles or infrastructure. Once the fuel has been purified, a range of additives is mixed into the gasoline to further enhance its performance. One of the most important types of additives is anti-knock agents, which improve the octane rating of the gasoline. A higher octane rating prevents engine knocking a phenomenon where the fuel-to-air mixture in the engine cylinders ignites prematurely, causing inefficient combustion and potential engine damage. 
In addition to anti-knock agents, gasoline is also treated with detergents. Over time, engines accumulate carbon deposits, which can reduce fuel efficiency and increase emissions. Detergents are added to gasoline to clean the fuel injectors and other parts of the engine, helping it run more smoothly and extend its lifespan. By preventing the buildup of these deposits, detergents also contribute to more consistent engine performance and better fuel economy. Without these additives, engines would experience a faster decline in efficiency, leading to more frequent maintenance and higher fuel consumption. Another critical category of additives includes antioxidants. These compounds prevent gasoline from degrading due to oxidation, which can lead to the formation of gum-like substances that clog fuel lines and engines. As gasoline is often stored for extended periods before use, maintaining its stability is crucial to ensure that it burns cleanly and efficiently when finally combusted. Metal deactivators are also added to inhibit metals like copper from accelerating this oxidation process, thereby preserving the fuel's quality during storage. To protect the storage and transport systems, corrosion inhibitors are introduced. These additives form a protective film on the metal surfaces of pipelines, storage tanks, and engine parts, reducing the risk of rust and corrosion. This is especially important for gasoline distribution infrastructure, which is in constant contact with the fuel and must remain intact to prevent leaks and contamination. Similarly, in colder climates, anti-icing agents are mixed in the fuel to prevent ice crystals from forming in the fuel lines. Ice can block the flow of gasoline to the engine, causing starting issues and, in extreme cases, engine failure. By lowering the freezing point of water in the fuel, anti-icing agents ensure that vehicles can operate even in freezing temperatures. Another essential additive is upper cylinder lubricants, which reduce friction between the pistons and the cylinder walls in an engine. While gasoline itself provides little lubrication, these additives ensure that key engine components move smoothly, preventing wear and tear over time. This results in better fuel efficiency and longer engine life, particularly for vehicles that endure heavy use or operate in harsh conditions. The combination of these various additives makes gasoline much more than a simple hydrocarbon fuel. It becomes a carefully engineered product designed to meet the demands of modern engines while minimizing environmental impacts. As gasoline engines evolve to become more efficient, cleaner burning and capable of higher performance, the formulation of gasoline itself must also adapt. The trend towards turbocharged and direct injection engines which require cleaner and more stable fuels has driven research into even more advanced additive technologies. These engines place greater demands on the fuel's ability to combust efficiently without causing engine deposits or premature wear, making the role of detergents and anti-knock agents even more critical. In addition, as biofuels like ethanol are increasingly blended into gasoline to reduce reliance on fossil fuels, new challenges arise in maintaining the stability and performance of the fuel. And that's a wrap on how gasoline goes from raw crude oil to the fuel that powers your vehicle. If you found this breakdown helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into the science and tech behind everyday products. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.